Hi, I'm Adam and thanks for stopping by. In this video, I'm going to be building the Gigatron TTL microcomputer. If you missed the unboxing video, I suggest you start there. You'll find a link at the top of this video. As you can see, this kit is supplied with a comprehensive manual which not only runs through the construction, but also gives details on how to read the various component values and tips on soldering. The first step is to solder in place 40 ceramic 100 nanofarad capacitors. It doesn't matter which way round these capacitors are fitted. However, for aesthetic reasons, I really like the text printed on them to be facing the same way. So all the capacitors fitted horizontally on my board have the text facing down, and all the capacitors fitted vertically have the text facing to the right. After soldering the ceramic capacitors in place, the next step is to measure the resistance between ground and 5 volts. This is to ensure that no short circuit was made in the previous step. To do this, set your meter to ohms and touch the probes together. This will ensure that the meter is working. You should now see a short which will measure approximately 0.5 ohms or less. Now that we know that the meter is working correctly, measure between the pads of C4. You should now see open circuit. If you measure a short, double check the soldering carried out in the previous step. You'll notice that I had difficulty inserting the USB connector. This is because a couple of holes had been filled with the green solder mask. This USB connector is only going to be used for power and not data. Since the filled holes were the data connections and I didn't have a drill bit small enough to clear them, I opted to just cut the data pins off the connector. The black diode with the silver stripe is a Zener diode and is used in the power supply circuitry, like all diodes, this must be inserted the correct way around. The silver stripe on the diode is represented by a line on the circuit board. When inserting, orientate the diode so that the stripe matches the line on the board. The 220 microfarad capacitor is an electrolytic capacitor and must be inserted the correct way around. In its case, it has a line down one side that represents its zero volt side and is shown on the PCB as the solid white half of the component. The supervisory circuit looks like a transistor. This must also be inserted the correct way around. You'll see that one side is flat. The flat side is shown on the PCB as facing to the right. This component is not pushed all the way down, but instead sits around 5 to 7 millimeters above the board. The LED, or light emitting diode, must also be inserted the correct way around. It has one short and one long leg. The long leg is inserted into the round pad marked with a plus symbol. Like the supervisory circuit, the LED is not pushed all the way down but instead sits around 5 to 7 millimeters above the board. Next we test the power supply circuitry by connecting it to a USB power supply. The LED should light solid as you can see here. If it is off or flashing, double check all soldering and component orientation.
This is the first chip to be soldered. All chips must be inserted the correct way around. At one end of the chip, you will see a small notch. This corresponds directly to the markings on the PCB. You may find that the chip doesn't fit into the PCB very easily. If this is the case, you'll need to carefully bend the pins. If you go ahead and purchase this kit, you'll find detailed instructions how to do this on page 28 of the manual. The next test to carry out is on the clock circuit. The clock outputs pulses between 0 and 5 volts. If we measure it with a meter, we should see the average voltage, which would read somewhere between 1.5 and 2.5 volts. To carry out this test, locate the two test pads marked GND and CLK1 using your voltmeter Measure the voltage across these two pads. You may see between minus 1.5 and minus 2.5 volts depending on which way around you are holding the probes during the test. If you don't see this voltage, double check that the meter is on the correct setting as well as checking the soldering and all component values and orientation. The resistor arrays must be inserted the correct way around. They have a small dot above pin 1 which is represented on the board by a small square.
Now there are 30, yes, 30 diodes to be soldered into place. Only two of these will lay flat on the board, with their stripe matching that that is printed on the board. The other 28 all stand upright with their stripe up in the air and that particular leg bent around and down into the hole with the square pad. Next we test if the Gigatron is running code. To do this, simply power it on and if the LEDs on the top left flash in a pattern, we know it's running code and working correctly. If however your LEDs are not flashing in this pattern, then double check all solder joints and component orientation. All that's left is to connect the controller, VGA monitor, power and have a play. Please join me in a future video where I take a look at the software running on the Gigatron. Thanks for watching. Remember to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell to be notified when I release new videos.